and uh, let the kids uh, hear from you what Western's all about, what your philosophy is, what your values that you are looking for in the players. And they will take the show from there by asking you questions. They'll raise their hands and I'll, I'll, I'll monitor that for you and then go from there. Yeah, awesome, Dave. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, so if you if you can moderate or like monitor the questions and, and throw them my way, because I'm not, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not super familiar with this app. Okay. Uh, you know, but uh, I do see chat. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to figure it out, but somehow. I'll do, yeah. I'll do it. I'll take care of it so you can, you can, you don't have to worry <laughs> awesome. about it. Yeah, so um, quickly introduce myself. My name's Martin. I've been coaching at Western. This is my, my 10th year uh, starting now. Um, for the last three years, I've been the head coach on both the men's and the women's side. So we'll be talking about both. Obviously, some questions may be specific to one or the other. So if you have a question that's specific, that's fine. Um, but a lot of the stuff we'll be talking about applies to both. Okay. Uh, before that, I coached for five years at Fanshawe College, which is also in London. Um, and in addition to that, I coached on the club side a, a lot. And for the last six years, I've been working with Toronto FC as a scout uh, on the first team side. So really looking at, you know, professional players from around the world. Um, a long time ago, I played at Western as well. So I studied at Western um, and was a soccer player on the men's team here. And academically, my background was in history, and then I also completed a degree in law, went to law school, uh, and then went back to school and became a teacher. Okay, but now I just get to concentrate on soccer full time, which is is a real privilege. Okay, and it's uh, it's an awesome way to it's an awesome profession and field to be in. You know, not without its challenges. But that's a little bit about me. Okay, so you know, Dave's given me some background. Ryan, feel free to to let me know if I'm off here, but, you know, I'm understanding most of the players here, okay, are between the ages of 13 to 17, okay, high performance players or players playing in OPDL teams in Pickering and in Tecumseh, okay, so there's a bit of a range, okay, so I'm going to ask for your patience, you know, some of the stuff, it's all relevant, it's all important information, if you're 17, some of the stuff is more important to you than if you're 13. But it's good to get the background information in. And again, just be prepared for what's coming down the road. Okay? So I'm going to ask you guys a couple questions to, to begin with. All right? Uh, and I would say you can just throw this in the chat, and I'll talk through some of it. I'd like you to everybody, and everybody should, should be able to do this, to write in something that you think you know about Western University or something that you think you don't know that you'd like to know. Okay, so if you so you know what, I'm really curious if there's anybody who knows anything, what you know about Western University, where it is, how big it is, what programs it has. So you could write that in. And if you don't have anything, you know, if you know nothing, then try to chat, add a chat, just put in something, a question you would have about this university that I'm here to talk to you guys about. All right. And we got a couple minutes. So you know, I'll just kind of go through them as they pop up. Ivy School of Business, we're going to talk about that. That's great. The entrance rate, that's an interesting one. Yes, London, Ontario. Awesome. Okay, the entrance rate, I'm assuming you mean like what the acceptance average is. Um, you know, it's a very competitive school, university, so a lot of people apply, all right, uh, to different programs. And, you know, really, you're, you're assessed based on your average in grade 12. We'll talk more about that. Um, but it can be competitive depending on the program. Okay, business again. Question about tuition, really important when you start looking at finances. I like the soccer questions the best, right? So some of the questions will be about soccer and some of the questions will be about the school and that's cool. Okay, all good questions. Okay, and the reason we're doing this is, is I wanna have an idea of what really you're interested in before I start talking about stuff that you might not be interested in at all. Okay, so yeah, medical school for sure. All right, we'll talk again about the different programs we have. First year, philosophy of the team, culture, values, all those things, really good. All right, excellent, excellent. Okay, so we're gonna start off. Wow, I love it. Good luck, uh, Martin, good luck. Yeah, no, there's some good questions. I like it. I like it. 
right? So we want this to be interactive. So we want, I don't want to sit here and talk to you and you guys be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another university presentation, heard that, done that, no big deal. Um, part of this really, you know, like a lot of university coaches, I think, but I'll say this, we've come up through here, studied at Western, played at Western, um, familiar with the different programs around the province, experience with student athletes, different options that are out there, transition to professional, all those things. All right. Excellent stuff. Near future. Wow. Standards. Whoa. Boom. Thoughtful group. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to do is now is I'm going to share a presentation with you. Okay. And the first part of the presentation. Okay. And some of this presentation will answer some of the questions. And it's going to really go talk about the school, what Western University is, what are the options, why would you study here? All right. Then we're going to go through all that boring stuff. When we're done that, then we're going to talk about soccer. And then we're going to say, you know, you're aspiring student athletes. You know, you're all on this call because you want to play at a, as a university soccer player or beyond. Um, and we're going to talk about what that process looks like. Okay. And some great questions. I'm looking forward to the discussion. So I'm going to get through this as quick as I can. So I'm going to share my screen. Dave, if I'm doing anything wrong, let me know. I just want to make sure. Sure. Just go up to the top left hand corner. There you go. Okay, so screen is being shaved, saved. And I'm gonna go through this presentation really quick. So. Awesome. Um, so Western University, obviously that's a picture. I'm gonna share a quick video that shows a little bit about campus. You know, I would recommend to anyone, whatever university you are interested in, the best way to get to learn to know a little bit more about that university is to visit, okay, to get a better idea. Okay, so I'm just going to play a video. The volume should be working. Sometimes it'll take a little bit to load up, so depending on how, how much. Yeah, is that, is that volume coming through, Dave? No. Okay. Yeah, so I knew I had this problem on Zoom. Well, that might do it. Any luck? Not yet. Maybe we'll skip that part and I'll just talk through it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. sure I'm not sure. I know on, on Zoom, Dave, there's like a share volume settings. Yeah. I haven't I, I've had an issue before on it once in a while, as the kids will tell you or laugh. Uh, but I, I figured it out later on. I just don't know what the issue might be on your end. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure. But either way, there's a picture western. I mean, the website's pretty easy. UWO.ca. You go there, you can do virtual campus tours, everything. Um, you know, Westerns, we were in London, we talked about that. So about two and a half hours, you know, west of you down the 401. Uh, Western's an enclosed campus. So in other words, it's kind of like a small city or small town within a city, if that makes sense. So when you come to Western, you're kind of within a bubble. If you have a campus map, you'll see later. You know, some things that Western are known for, uh, it's a big school, so 30,000 students, give or take. Um, top research, you know, intensive. In other words, if you're looking at getting into any field in the sciences, uh, Western's research is, you know, opportunities are quite substantial. Yeah, right now with COVID, there's been a couple developments um, in terms of, you know, looking at vaccines and certain things that Western has been at the forefront of. Uh, residents, so most. 99% of students in their first year would live in a residence, which is like a dormitory, uh, student housing. Okay, and we have a pretty progressive, like new system where there's different options to choose from. Okay, alumni connections. So again, a lot of people have come through Western, uh, a lot of people gone on to success and that really only matters if you're able to connect with them. And one of the cool things about being a, a student athlete is, is our alumni group on both our men's and our women's side. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. 
but we have a great mentorship program uh, that ties into some of our, our programs. For example, in business, we have some, some people who've gone through and studied at Ivy and, you know, help our student athletes try to, you know, after your four or five years at Western, move into the workplace, okay? I mean, beautiful campus. Again, you come here and you visit and you can see that for yourself. And diverse student population internationally from all over Canada. Uh, I think that's something that's just going to continue to to grow. Okay, again, tons of different options and lots of options where you can combine different things. So if you're not sure what you want to study, you know, you can combine, for example, you know, kinesiology with, you know, geography, things like that. So there's lots of ways to combine, like we said, degree flexibility. Okay, the main faculties you would apply to. So when you talk about universities, you're talking about faculties, which are basically like divisions within, right? So those are the main ones. So for example, social science is a big one if you're looking at history or politics, geography, psychology, sociology, that's all within social science. Okay, science obviously you should be familiar with. Okay, health science and kinesiology are both very popular programs at Western. All right, so those are the main faculties. There are also some more specialized programs, okay, which are a couple of them, those are listed here. So if you're interested in becoming an engineer, you can apply to engineering straight out Western. So we have a, a really big engineering program with many different models within it. Uh, med sci, medical science is a very popular one also. So if you're looking at medical school as an option, our medical science program is well known because of its ability to prepare students for med school. Okay, nursing uh, is obviously a very competitive field across Canada. And, you know, we have a brand new nursing building that was just built. So those are all popular programs that are more focused, you know, where you would enter in your first year. Okay, we also have something, this one's a little tricky. So affiliate colleges or affiliate campuses. So Western's a big school, 30,000 people. You know, for some people that could be not the perfect fit. So we also have these small colleges that are part of Western, okay, that are located within Western that offer smaller classes, you know, so for example, Kings has about 1500 students and it's, you know, right next door to Western and it's part of Western. You can play on the Western teams, you're considered a Western student, you graduate with a Western degree, okay? There's a campus map, just, just put this in here to show you so this is all of Western's campus. And like I said, it's fairly enclosed. Uh, and I don't expect you to be able to read any of the fine print, but this was just to show you, you know, Brescia College is right here on the left side of that screen and King's College is right here on the right side of that screen. To walk from Brescia to King's all the way through campus, you know, would probably be about a 20 minute walk, maybe 25 minutes, okay? And just for your perspective, that's our soccer field over here. Okay, I want you to see my cursor. So that's just the campus map. Why would you look at the Kings or Brescia or Huron? Okay, we'll skip the videos again, but specialized programs. So Brescia, Foods and Nutrition is a big one. Kings, Criminology is a big one. Um, the other big offer there are smaller class sizes, smaller campus, and scholarship opportunities. So somebody asked about tuition. So when I say scholarship opportunities, I'm talking about academic scholarships. So this would be, you know, based on your grade 12, your six top U or M level courses, university level courses, you know, as of now, that may change. Uh, but right now, you look at your grade 12 average, top six courses, and this would be kind of an idea of what the academic scholarships you would be eligible for at Western. Okay, changes a little bit from year to year. Okay, this year I think it actually starts at 82%. If you had an 82% average and you were at Kings, you would qualify for a continuing scholarship for $1,500 a year. So that means you would get it every single year, you know, provided you maintain a certain average. Okay, now you can see main campus is a lot more difficult to get academic scholarships. Typically they don't start until you're in the 90s. Okay, so competitive, but more are available at the affiliate colleges. So something you may want to consider. Okay, for those of you who are interested in, in business. So we talked about that. Ivy is the business school at Western. 
really well known across the country, probably across the world. A lot of international students come to Ivy. Okay. Um, two options. All right. One is this thing called AEO. So if you're in grade 12, you would apply for AEO. That application is a supplemental. So it's a separate application from your normal application. And your AEO application, basically, it in, you know, obviously would see your marks, but it also highlights your extracurriculars. So what are you doing outside of school in terms of your sports teams, in ter terms of your involvement in the community? Okay, so that application goes in separately, uh, also due by late December of your grade 12 year. Okay, and if you get that AEO, it means that you have a guaranteed advanced entrance offer, which would start in your third year. So at Ivy, there's a four-year option or a five-year option. In both of those, your first two years, you get to study anything else you want, provided you are accepted to that. Okay, so for example, I applied to Ivy, I got AEO, but my interest is in kinesiology. So you spend your first two years studying kinesiology, and then your next two years would be your honors business administration, your HBA at Ivy. Okay, or if you spend an extra year, all right, then your fifth year is a combination of the two, and you would end up with a combined degree where you have your degree in kinesiology as well as your HBA. All right, you know, for those of you again interested in business, big attraction is, you know, the transition to the workplace. Uh, and as it says here, you know, 96% of graduates from Ivy, you know, within three months are working and their average salary is, is quite good. And that might be out of date, so it might even be higher now. All right. Not for everybody, but if you're interested in business, it's small. Bit. Basics of applying grade 12 to your high school will give you your PIN number in grade 12, and that's how you apply through. It's called OUAC or OUAC. And, you know, for each university applied to, you're allowed to apply to three programs within that university, right? So as you do that in the fall of your grade 12 year, you could apply to social sciences at Western. You could apply to MOS, which is business or management organization studies. And you could apply to uh, kinesiology. So you could apply to three different programs, okay? Your offers for admission for academics, the earliest they would come out for most people would start February, and then there basically would be three rounds. So from February until May, depending on how strong your grade 11 and grade 12 marks are, will depend on when you get accepted or if you get accepted. Okay, it obviously also depends on what program you're applying to. Okay, so when you apply to Western, it's different if you're applying to nursing or if you're applying to, applying to general arts. If you're applying to nursing, and your average is 85%. It's a really good average, but it's not good enough to get you into nursing. Into general arts, you probably would get accepted. Okay, it's important you look ahead and hopefully your guidance counselors talk to you about this so that you're prepared for whatever required courses there are. So for example, if you're looking at kinesiology, biology grade 12 is a required course. All right, just to sum that up, it's normal not to know if you're not sure what you want to do, especially the young you are. But even when you come here as a first year student, a lot of our first year students come and they're not sure what they want to do. Uh, they take their first year courses. Maybe they have a better idea after that. So don't worry. Don't be stressed if you're not sure. Okay. There is a lot of work that needs to be put in earning, you know, your admission, partially in terms of how well you do in school. Uh, but then also, obviously, if you want to make sure the right fit, it combines everything. Okay, and then timing. We'll talk more about timing afterwards when we go into the soccer part of the converse, uh, conference. All right, we'll get to the soccer after. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, so I would like to open it up now to questions. Just almost forget about the university uh questions about the admission process anything any questions about that okay so questions about admission anybody this will be the quiet part Matt Martin. that's okay that's, that's fine with me but i mean mm -hmm. we'll talk about it reasons to choose a university academics is probably the number one reason you choose a university yeah 
you know? So uh, the soccer part's great. That's the fun part and it's the part we all love, but academics important. Okay. All right, so why don't, why, don't, why don't we move on if somebody doesn't have a question? Anybody have a question? Oh, Steve, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, so for the academic scholarship or the like when you apply for academics, does if you get a scholarship depending on your average, does it can is it only for the first year or can it continue on depending on your average as you go through university? Like can the scholarship apply to each year you take or just the first year? Yeah, so it's a really important question. So there'd be two, the answer to that is it depends on the scholarship. So the ones I was talking about in the presentation were continuing. So a continuing scholarship continues every year you're, that you are at that university, but you have to meet certain requirements. So no matter what school you're looking at, when you look at those scholarships, try to, that's a key question. Is it an entrance scholarship? or is it a continuing scholarship? An entrance scholarship is only for one year. A continuing scholarship is a scholarship that continues for up to four years, okay? Maybe up to five years at some places, okay? And the only thing about a continuing scholarship is in most situations, it requires that you maintain a certain average. You know, so different scholarships, for some scholarships, the high-end scholarships, because there's a whole bunch of other kind of awards that you can get. Some of them would say that to maintain that scholarship, you need to maintain an 80% average in university. Some, you know, would say you have to maintain a 70% average in university. Okay. If you're accepted to Ivy, does the scholarship continue through to Ivy? Like, good question. It... Yeah, good question. So if it's a King, if it's a main campus scholarship, you know what? Actually, I have never heard that question before. So I'm going to be honest. I'll have to get back to you on that. I don't know. I know for sure if it's a King's or a Brescia scholarship, it would not apply to Ivy. Okay. Now, Ivy does have their own, you know, Ivy is more expensive. So when we talk about tuition, Ivy is more expensive. Uh, but they do also have their own bursaries and awards as well okay, that, you, that you can apply for. Thank you. Anybody else? William, you want to ask a question for admittance? Uh, yes, please. Um, you said there were uh, partnering schools with um, Western. Uh, what's, is there a big difference in the education levels at the other schools? That's, that's a really good question as well. So, yeah, so they're, they're called affiliate, affiliate campuses. So they're part of Western. They're not, I wouldn't call them other schools. The best way I would describe it is kind of like if you're at high school and there's a portable within your high school, the affiliate yeah. schools are more like portables. And the portable would be like your homeroom where you take at least two of your classes are at the homeroom, but you can also take classes in the high school. Yeah. Your intramurals are in the high school, your varsity team's in the high school, you're part of the high school, you wear the same high school shirt, right? So that's the best way I can explain them. The quality of the education in general, people, the difference is more in what programs are offered. So at King's, for example, it's known as a liberal arts pro, uh, school. If you're interested in social sciences or arts or business, really, really good, okay? If you're interested in science, King's doesn't even offer science, okay? So it would depend on what you wanna offer. I would say in general though, reputation wise, I think they're considered as good if not better, okay? Um, and certainly the smaller class sizes, I think, you know, can make the learning environment for your first and second years much better. So what happens is a lot of students spend their first or second year at Kings or Huron or Brescia, and then sometimes we'll transfer to main campus afterwards, which is also, you're, which you're also able to do. Is it also the same diploma or same? Same degree. Yeah, same degree. You get a Western degree. So it's, it's exactly the same. Thank you. Yeah, I would say all those websites are really good if you get a chance to check them out. And okay. if, there's, if you know what you want to study, that will help you find out pretty quickly if it's a fit. Okay, Martin, why don't you take them into the, the athletic portion of it? Which yeah, is, no. will captivate them to, to look at even more about Western. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So 
I'll, I'm going to do more talking and less showing in this presentation, Dave. Okay. Um, but I will just share a little bit, just as kind of some kind of cues. Okay. But I really want you to try to listen as well as you can. Uh, and then we can talk about it afterwards. All right. So go back to sharing. Okay, so again, Western soccer, right? That's a picture of our field, so Mustang Field. You know, it's located on the edge of campus. Uh, facilities, you know, I would say, I'll be honest with you, our facilities are good. They're not the best, um, you know, but our field is good. It's 120 by 80, so max, maximum size uh, for playing, 160 by 80 for training is because we have the end zone spaces. You know, so we do a lot of training where we set up multiple games going at the same time, uh, which we have the ability to do, because we do carry bigger rosters, which is something you should be aware of. Uh, typical training would be at afternoon slash evening. So that's why I chose a couple pictures. Um, that's a picture of our, well, our women's team training from a few years ago now. All right. Uh, another picture, this would be from a, a few years ago also. So this is a picture of us hosting a game. This would be actually an OUA Final Four. Okay, so, you know, the competitive format in Ontario, it's all based on geography. So we have a West Division and East Division. We compete in the OUA West Division, you know, where there's nine teams. Uh, this goes for both the men's and the women's teams. All right, so OUA West. Uh, our women's team has been at, at the top or near the top, you know, for the last eight years. Uh, I think we've won the division four times. Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but... what? Won the division four times. I think came in second place. Came in three times. Um, and based on that, we had the opportunity to host the provincial Okay. And the hosting site varies between east and west. All right. So that's just a picture of us there in our game field. Our men's team, just to give you a perspective, our men's team has been competitive uh, all the way west in men's soccer. See, you know, for the last 10 years, we've probably been in the second tier. In other words, we're a playoff team, a regular playoff team. You know, we made it to, we finished third in Ontario two years ago, but that was our only medal in the last 10 years. So we're close, um, but we've been a step behind. And just to give you an idea on the competitive side, uh, where we are. Okay, that's a picture team a couple years ago this was a girls presentation women's team presentation but i'm going to get to a couple of men's as well we talked about alumni earlier so i think a big thing a unique thing a fantastic thing about university sports is the ability for our athletes to come up and connect with the athletes that went before them okay and you know certainly at western this is our picture of our women's alumni uh we get together every couple of years and we run some good celebrations and that's part of it but another big part of it is you know, the support we get from our alumni, not just financially, but also in terms of connecting our current players with our alumni to help, you know, beyond soccer. In other words, if you're looking at, you know, getting ready for your med school interview, actually, this is happening this Saturday. So our captain from our men's team has a med school interview on Saturday. So he's getting ready for that interview. So I reached out to, you know, a couple of different men's and women's alumni, and he was able to meet with them to help prepare for the interview, something they've, you know, gone through the last couple of years or last five years. And, you know, I think that connection is really valuable. Again, for anyone looking at Ivy, we've got some Ivy graduates and they're great. So that was our women's alumni. There's our men's alumni, uh, or some of us. Okay. So again, a lot of really well-connected people that can help you out and they're there to support you. Okay. A couple of examples of our men's alumni. Um, Hader Al-Shabani, really good story. Funny thing about Hadar is in his first year at Western, he was cut. He did not make the team. Okay, so he came up to training camp and did not make the soccer team. And then a few years later, he was called into a national team camp. Ended up having a uh, playing in France and is now the, the video analyst at Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne is a really, really good club in France. Uh, some of you may have heard of. Okay, so 
I think Hadar's story is really interesting, like I said, because he was 17. You know, nobody would have predicted him going on to the success he had. Uh, another men's alumni, okay, Dr. Nick Bontis. Um, so Nick played at Western. He was a multi-sport athlete, played track and field and soccer. Um, and obviously has now just been elected as our president of Canada soccer. Okay, so Nick's a person we're, we're close with and he stays connected with our Western community and great resource to help us out. And just another example. Uh, his son actually, his older son, Charlie, is also committed to attend Western next year uh, on the men's side. All right. I don't have a picture of her, but Eva Haveras is a really, she's now executive vice president of York United on the women's side. And so she's a women's alumni that's still big in the game, uh, involved in soccer. Okay. And there's tons of other ones. Okay. Now, stop sharing. Do you want to go, are we going to go to questions? Yeah, we're going to go to questions. Yeah, we're going to talk. But I'm going to prompt them a little bit if that's okay, because I, sure. I know yep. where I want to go. I just got to get out of this sharing. Yeah, you're, you're out. Oh, I'm good? All right. Yep. So, guys, so my question for you is kind of, I want you to put to yourselves in my shoes, all right, and say, so I'll give you a little bit, bit of facts. So in a typical year, you know, say 2021, there's been about – let's say ballpark 200 to 250 athletes that have contacted us with an interest in playing soccer at Western. Okay. Out of that 200 to 250 athletes, you know, we're able to, you know, offer positions on the team to maybe 10 out of those 10 athletes, maybe one or two, ah, two or three. Well, we'll talk about the scholarship stuff afterwards. But 10 athletes out of 250. So to get to that number of 250, what do you think is important to us as coaches? And you know what? I would say, yeah, throw it in the chat because I think we'll get through this. Attitude, character. Yep. Yeah, points for originality. So if you can come up with something that nobody else is coming up with, I'd love to see it. Awesome. Feel free to keep adding. Okay. So I like that. All right. So, all right. So really good, really good. And all, Spot on, okay? But let me face the question to you another way. If your team is playing and a university coach comes to watch your team play, you know, what do you think is going to stand out to them on the field? It might be some of the stuff you said. Is there anything else that hasn't been said? Yeah, all important. All right, Thomas, I like it. Oh, no, Thanos. Thanos. All right. Let's be real here. The first thing that's going to stand out, all right, is going to be your playing ability. Right? So we're going to watch a game. I'm going to be like, oh, look at that, Blair. So, and so let's break that down a little bit further. So when a university coach is watching you play, they want to see, you know, your ability. So what does that mean? What are some basic traits you think you're looking at? There's one I don't think I've seen that's really important. And the older you get, the older it gets in terms of the amount of time you have to spend working on it. All right, we got somebody. Eva. Somebody said fitness. Okay, so fitness is a one word. So yeah, your physical capacity is important, right? So that's going to stand out. So I'm going to tell you the truth. When I watch a team play, the first thing I'm going to notice about a player is what their physical kind of conditioning movement looks like, 
You know, that's yeah. the easiest thing. It's the quickest thing. It's a first impression. It's important. Okay. So endurance, all that stuff. So when you're talking about your physical, it's important. As you get ready to go to university, it's important. It's also important because it gets harder. Okay. So that is important. So what can you do about that? There's a few of you that are probably really blessed that have amazing genetics and coaches are going to watch process, whatever. So that's great. For the other 90 okay, the attribute that you can show a coach is your conditioning work rate, which ties into the mental as well. It ties into your emotional soul. Okay, so number one, somebody's watching play, they want to see, is that player incredibly hardworking? Are they going to cover the ground that they need to? Okay, in addition, the players are going to stand out. Our players are going to stand out because, wow, that player is incredibly Okay, so really important. Okay, now, then we add the other back. So I think you guys are probably familiar with the kind of four corner approach. Um, when we talk about evaluating players and things like that, assessing yourselves. So all important, okay? So technical ability, crucial, all right? So most players at 17 who think they're good technically, OPDL players, you may come to university and you may think, I thought I was good technically, but really, I'm not that good. Okay? And that same goal. Okay? So technically, there's being good, and then there's being really good. And it just goes up and up. So also important, right? What are some skills that are really important that are really rare? What do you guys think? What do you think separates players technically? Because I'll tell you, there are some that it blows my mind. Players get here, and the just technical ability Something's a separate. Both feet, big one. Massive, massive. Okay, all real. Where do goals come from? Uh, like, goals come from shooting. Yeah, so ball striking. Right? So, you know, Again, being two-footed, but then being able to shoot, being able to cross, being able to strike the ball over distance, right, uh, with both feet. You know, yeah, your first touch, everyone needs a good first touch. Everyone needs a decent amount of close control, okay? But, you know, if we want to play a certain way and we're playing against a team, if you can, you know, make a long pass, that makes a big difference, okay? And, and I'll be honest with you, we have players, it, it, it's, it separates players a lot. Aerial ability is another one, okay? So all those, technical ability for sure, you know? And then your precision and you'll be able to do everything at speed, okay? Your decision-making tactics, massive, okay? So like then your speed of play, all right? So speed so of play, so when you talk about your decision-making, your tactical awareness on the field, also crucial, okay? And then the last one, that most of you, your first reaction was good, he talked about attitude, compete level. So character, values, let's talk about that. Okay? So when you come here as a university player, no matter where you go, it's going to be challenging for you. Okay? So you're going to be outside of your comfort zone to a degree. When you get thrown in that environment, what character traits do you think are going to help you? This one, I'd like to have volunteers. I don't want to hear one word. I'd like to say, you know, the character trait is, is this, and this is why. And you can make it specific. So I got to university. I'll tell you about, about my story. I got to university, and I went through one week of training camp. And there was, I think, four first-year players were invited to training camp. And I thought I was one of the best players there. I uh, thought I was better than most of the returning players. I thought I was, you know, yeah, this is great. Then the coach, he picked 16 players to go to a, an away trip uh, that weekend. And, <clears throat> and he picked only one first-year player, and it wasn't me. So I did not get chosen for that trip. So in response to not getting chosen for that trip, well, guess what Martin did? He 
you practiced <laughs> until you yeah, got I love, I love how it's going there. No, Martin quit the team. Martin quit the team. Somebody got there. Here's uh, excellent. Martin said, this is bullshit. Um, I'm better than half these guys who got picked. I didn't get picked. I'm not doing this. Okay. Um, now, a long time later, Martin can look back at that. Do you think Martin's proud of that decision? You know, probably yeah. not. That team went on to win a silver medal at Nationals that year. Do I think I could have eventually proven myself and played on that team? Absolutely. Do I think I could have made a difference and helped that team, you know, contribute to that team? Absolutely. Okay, but my ego was too big, um, and I quit the team. Okay? So, talk about character. What, what character trait do you think I could have shown there that I, that I didn't? There's a couple. You want them to unmute themselves or do you want to in the uh, chat room? Uh, either one, yeah, whatever you think is easier. I'm, I'm good. I would say resilience, determination, big one. Yeah, you know, Martin got, you have a setback. How do you deal with it? Right? I took my ball and I went home. That's no good. Okay. Dedication, determination, yep. Perseverance. Yeah. Perseverance, big one. Okay. Going into the experience, is there another quality you think I could have had that I think is important? Okay. Boom. Thanos, you're on fire. Okay, Thanos, humility, right? So, you know, I thought I was, you know, super amazing. And then the coach said, no, you know what? You don't need to come on this trip. Maybe he was trying to send me a message. I don't know. Okay, but humility, right? So come in, really important. Okay, so the character you come in with when you go to university, doesn't matter where you go, you're going to be outside your comfort zone. Why? You're a first-year player. There's a bunch of senior players there. Now, all of a sudden, there's 30 players on a team, and they're all fighting to get in the lineup. Okay, and as a first-year player, no matter what, you're coming in and you're challenging that hierarchy. Okay, so, you know, it's going to require those now, some of the things, you know, that determination, you know, you're going to need, that's just on an individual level, right? So just for you to have success. And then there comes a question, what about to have a team that has success? What do you need, right? Because we want to build a team that has success. So what attributes do we want from, from our players, from our student athletes to have the team have success? Trust, 100%. Communication, 100%. Okay? So I'm putting this in the process of putting this into a presentation. We talk about our A's. Okay? So the, the qualities we're looking for are in A's. All right? One is adaptability. Okay? So adaptability. You know, you may be used to being a really important player on your team. Are you adaptable to find a different way to be value when maybe your role is going to change? Are you adaptable on a smaller scale? Can you play different positions? Are you adaptable? Can you understand now different contexts within a game and how to contribute? So are you adaptable? Okay. Or you say, no, coach, I've always played left back. And my coach taught me that when we play out of the back, I go stand over here and this is what we do. Okay, because, you know, that's great. And I'm not saying, you know, that's fine. But when you get to university, your coach is going to ask you to do different things in a different way. So are you adaptable? Okay. Next thing is, what's your awareness like? Okay. So we talk about awareness. What does that mean? Okay. So there's a, you know, on the field awareness. That's really how do you read the game? How do you make decisions? But how's your awareness within a team? Okay. So how's your awareness that, you know, you're coming in? Yeah. Social awareness, massive, right? Knowing your surroundings, knowing that I'm part of this team. I'm part of this team. You know, some players who've been there three or four years that you're going to show and say, yeah, I got to show a little bit of respect here. Okay. Um, now, you also, the other A we want to see is ambition. Right? What's ambition on a personal level to you? Yeah, awareness, big one, knowing your weaknesses, going back to that. Amazing. So awareness is not just knowing what you're good at, knowing what you need to work at. 
Okay, Antonio, amazing. That's a, a, you know, I missed that, but yeah. Awareness, what am I good at? What do I need to get better at, right? Massive. Can't really grow if you don't have that. Okay, so, but then we talk about ambition. What is personal ambition to you as a university soccer athlete, soccer player? Okay, wanting success, that's general. Let's get specific. What is your ambition? I wanna do what? Personally, what are my goals? It's my ambition. My ambition is to make the team, maybe. My ambition is to be a starting player, maybe. My ambition is to get to the next level, 100%. My ambition individually is to be part of a winning team, for sure. My ambition, yeah, sure, I got a scholarship, 100%. My ambition, look at this one, improve, fantastic, right? How am I going to get better? Just because I want to get better. You know, not because there's a pot of gold there necessarily, but just, you know what? I spend my time doing this. I really enjoy doing this. I like that challenge of getting better. Think of all the people who play mus musical instruments, right? People who love spending time doing whatever. It's not because, you know, you're going to make it into a rock band necessarily. You love doing it and you want to get better because it gives you a good feeling. Amazing. Okay. So some intrinsic motivation there. I love that. Okay. Going pro, being a starting player. Again, nothing wrong with that. Okay. Wanting to prove. Okay. I want to be a captain. Interesting yeah. one. Okay. I prefer want to be a good leader to wanting to be a captain because you can always be a good leader. You can't really control yourself being a captain. That's not necessarily going to be your decision. Okay, but being a good leader, I think it's important. Look for improvement. So there's intrinsic energy. So ambition is massive on an individual level. So we want players that are adaptable. We want players that are ambitious and we want players that are aware. Okay? You know, if you're ambitious without awareness, though, it's no good. Because I could say, guys, right now, I want to, you know what, um, I'm really old and, and out of shape, but I want to go back and try to make it as a professional soccer player. Well, that's great. I've got ambition, but my awareness is terrible. So we want those attributes to go together. Okay. Now, what's ambition on a team level? What's ambition on a group level? Win the league, like it, right? So winning the championship, <clears throat> yeah, 100%. Amazing. All right, so the same thing, we could look at that intrinsic. Yeah, we, I wanna win, we wanna win nationals. We wanna make it to nationals. We wanna win provincials, we wanna make it to provincials. We wanna make the playoffs. We wanna win our next game, 100%. Okay, so those okay. extrinsic goals are there. Are those intrinsic goals there as well, maybe as a team, right? Do we want to improve as a team, right? And is that just measured by goals and, and you know, wins and losses? Or do we want to improve as a team in terms of our connectivity, right? In terms of the way we support each other, in terms, you know? So I think those are all important. When we're talking about ambition, we want to have be part of the best versions of ourselves and the best version of our team that we can possibly be. All right. Um, and certainly getting better throughout that process is really important. Okay. The fourth A, does anyone want to take a guess? The fourth A. So adaptability, ambition, <clears throat> awareness. Yeah, it's yeah. all part of that. Too, so I guess there's a fifth A. That's awesome. Accountability, boom. Okay. Now I wish I could pronounce that name. I'm going to try. And I'm going to be accountable and admit if I made a mistake. Kuma, no. Anyone want to help with it? I've never seen that spelling. He's Sorry? Right. So I keep... Irish, Irish name. Irish, I, Irish. I, Irish. Irish. excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, so accountability. You know, because if anybody of you, and maybe this could be the first time, but my guess is, you know, I'm not talking to any perfect human beings or any perfect soccer players. And you're certainly not listening to a perfect coach, right? So we're going to make mistakes along the way, right? And then are we able to be accountable for our mistakes? 100%. So are we able to look at ourselves? Again, it ties into awareness. You can't have accountability if you don't have awareness. Are we able to look in the mirror and say, these are the things we did well? 
These are the things we think we're good at. These are the things we think we can improve. Um, you know, and maybe there's some tough decisions we have to make along the, that way. All right. A lot of talking. You guys have been fantastic with a lot of ideas. But really, those four A's sum up what we want to be. <clears throat> and through that process, what are our goals? You know, I'll give you that. After four or five years of, of being a Western Mustang soccer player, we want you to look back and feel like you were, number one, it was an ama amazing experience. So it was enjoyable. You know, so for all the ups and downs and for all the, like, you know, challenges that went with it, it was enjoyable, you know. And that's a big part for me of sports, and especially of team sports. You're not doing it because you, you don't like it, okay? Not every aspect of it is enjoyable. It's fun. But when you look at it, you're able to reflect on it. You know, it was a really amazing experience, okay? That's number one. And the second main thing is, is it helped your growth as a human being, okay? You know, as a soccer player, it's a small part of that, but then as a human being. So it can help you as you move on to different things, right? Can that mean it helps you, you know, move on to a professional soccer playing career? For sure it can. You know, that's the 1% of university athletes. So it's not the majority of you, you know, but can you look back and say it was an amazing experience to help prepare you for later in life? 100%. You know, that's where we want to get to. Okay. Now we will open it up to your questions, you know, uh, if there's anything specific about the recruiting process, specific about our team, you know, most of what coaches say, I would guess, is, is fairly standard, right? In terms of schedule is pretty condensed. You know, it's pretty intense. There's some demands made of your time, but it's it's manageable, okay? Um, we want you to succeed in school first. You know, we don't want to take that away. Um, but I will leave it to you guys. So any questions about the recruiting process, life as a student athlete, um, any questions about what our program is about? Okay, Jonathan, you want to go first? Okay, William, you want to go? You want to ask the question? Yes, coach. Um, I was wondering, what are your expectations of your players uh, during the off season? That's a good question. Is it William? Yep. All right. Yeah, it's a good question. So our expectations. So the season, gen, I'll give you a, in general, August would be considered preseason. September until mid-November is the season. The middle of November until the end of December is kind of a break. January until early April would be spring season. April is more exam time slash break. And then really the off season is May, June, and July. Okay, so that's kind of the seasonal 12 month kind of blueprint. The expectations are put yourself in the best position possible to come in in August and be ready to compete and be ready to play. And so that means it's going to depend on you as an athlete. Okay, what we th what we think you need to prioritize. All right, there will be flexibility because we, again, we understand soccer is part of your, your lives, but it's not the only thing in your lives, especially as you become second, third, fourth year students. And you may have job opportunities, um, things that are important to you, okay? As a minimum, you need to come in in August fit, right? So we'll, we'll let you know these are the expected benchmarks and you need to, as a minimum, in most cases, we'll expect that you play as, uh, as high a level as possible, as, as logistically possible for you. And we'll help try to facilitate that where we need to. And that's gonna mean different things for different people. You know, and, you know, if you're a, a first year player coming in, it's going to be, you need to be somewhere where you're going to play. You need to be somewhere where you're getting as many minutes on the field as possible. If you're, you know, a third year player who's already played a lot and has that experience and now needs an extra challenge, then yeah, can you go somewhere in the summer where you're around, you know, players yeah. that are better than you that are going to push you now to get to that higher level, you know, so it's going to depend a little bit about you as an individual and what you're ready for as a player. You know, um, but yeah, a challenging environment for sure. Um, and the better player you are, the more experience you have, that obviously that challenge increases. Thank you, Coach. And Coach David, is it okay if I ask him one more, one more question? Uh, you want to do a follow-up so you become a journalist already. Okay, go ahead. 
Coach Martin, um, where is it? Oh, what type of coach are you in games, and what type of coach are you in during practices? Sure, I hope I'm the same coach in both. Um, you know, obviously in games we all get excited sometimes, so maybe, you know, but sometimes in practice we get excited as well. So I would say, in a nutshell, yeah. I would say, you know, demanding but also caring at the same time. Um, you know, certainly I would say more on the vocal side. You know, it's depending on the, again the context. So university season, very short season, right? Short number of games, short time to get ready for each game. So in that situation, I would say I'm more vocal than I would like to be, or that I would say in a different context I would be, okay? And it's also an environment where results do matter. We do play to win every game. You know, it's not, if we lose, that's okay. That's not kind of anything that we would, if we end up losing, we end up losing, we're okay with that. But our goal is to win every game and to try to find a way. And if we can't win, to tie every game, uh, to not drop points. So if I feel like being vocal during the game is going to help us with that, then I will be vocal, okay? Now, there's a downside to that. William, what's the downside to that? Uh, it could be the players maybe getting hard on themselves or feeling upset about their performance. Okay, so anxiety of players is one downside. There's actually another one. What's the problem if the coach is always talking? Oh, the refs. Well, there's that. If the coach is always talking, what's the problem? Did you take a shower already? Yeah, you guys might say that. Well, I'm talking more during the game now. <laughs> Yeah, the players aren't able. So now you're relying on the coach to, to, you know, to find your solutions. I don't know if anybody here follows Chelsea at all, but uh, Thomas Tuchel was just at an interview the other day. He's the new coach of the Chelsea men's team and was talking about, you know, it's important we try to get players to understand the principles and how we want to play so that during the game they can implement it themselves. Okay, and it's not dependent on the coach making changes or giving specific instructions. So, you know, I'd say I'm vocal, but I try to balance that as well uh, and certainly follow it up. Uh, and that's why we do have a spring season where things will be a little bit more longer term focused um, and same thing with training. So yeah, vocal to an extent, but, but with some balance. Okay, so the Sorry, there's, a few more, there's a few more questions. So I'm gonna jump in and get Xavier to ask you one. Sure. sure. Xavier? Uh, hello, Coach Martin. Uh, How you doing? My question for you is what sets your school apart from others and why? Like, what can you provide for us that other schools can? Ooh, ask not what your school can do for you. Ask what you know. Just kidding. So, Xavier, it's a good question. Thank you. So, in general, okay, I'll give you the, the, the classic Western answer. So, when you go to university, it's a combination of academics, athletics, and student experience, right? And so Western is known as a really good balance of those three. So you get a top education, you know, you know, our soccer teams are very competitive, good environments are going to help you out there. Uh, and then on top of that, the university is a very vibrant university, a lot of people from all over the place coming in and you get that kind of social cultural experience. Uh, as well. So it's the balance, I think, that separates us, you know, from other schools. And again, every school has got their pros and cons and every school is unique. So, so that's how I would, I would answer that, Xavier. Okay. Rachel? Hi, coach. I'm Rachel Skandar and I play uh, on the 0405 OPDL team. And uh, something I wanted to know is what is uh, something you make sure your players know coming into your school, like either academically or even like coming in for the team? Rachel, that's a great question. And by the way, um, just to give Rachel, so what Rachel just did there, introduce herself before she asked the question was fantastic. Okay, really important. And, you know, I just wanted to highlight that because I think that's a, that's a really impressive way you did that. Okay. Um, so what do we want athletes to know as they're coming in? All right, so we will have, so when student athletes come in, there will be kind of academic workshops that are set up in August to help you in terms that are specific for athletes that are, you know, be prepared for your multiple choice exams, be prepared for 
writing, be prepared for, you know, how to take notes from lectures when there might be 500 students in the same class. So we don't really focus too much on that. What we will do is we will partner you up with upper year students who are in the same faculties. So for example, if you're coming into first year med sci, we'll make sure you've had a chance to meet with and get advice from our third year med sci students. Okay, so we will do that. As an athlete, things will try to prepare you. You know, we will definitely make sure you have an idea of what the fitness requirements are. We'll get you on that type of a program, okay? And we will start inviting you into kind of more specific team-oriented, here are our principles of play, here's what we want you to understand, here's some terminology we want you to understand that are soccer specific, okay? We don't wanna to put too much pressure on you though. You're gonna put enough pressure on yourself when you come to university as a first year athlete. So it's some basic, we want you to come here and feel confident. We want you to come here and feel familiar in, at least with the ideas we have, with, with the words we use. Um, yeah, and then we want you to get in here and compete. Okay, the last question, we go to Antonio. I was just like wondering what your training sessions are like. It's a good question, Antonio. It's, you know, obviously going to depend a lot on the, the timing of the training session. So I'll give you a, a typical week in, in season. So typical week, we'll play two games. Um, and let's just move forward from games as opposed to moving back. So, you know, if you played in those games, you have two rest days. One of those rest days will be active rest. Okay. So let's say in a typical week, we were able to have what I would call two intense training sessions. Uh, and then one that's more specific. Well, they're all geared towards the next games, but one that's more light. So in those two intense training sessions, what would they look like? Um, they'd probably look like a really short time in physical activation uh, to make sure you're ready to go. And, and then it would be a lot of playing games, uh, a lot of really, you know, it would be a mix, but a lot would be, so I'll give you the best answer. So some of it would be small group. So for example, if we're playing with a back four, it would be our back four and maybe two holding midfielders working together as a group with a goalkeeper. So there'd be a group of 15 players working at one end of the field, another group of 15 players working at the other end of the field uh, with different coaches on different phases of play. And then, you know, we try to bring that together into an 11 v 11 format, you know, for the second part of the session. All right. At different times, we may, depending on where we feel the players are at psychologically, um, introduce some more isolated technical work. I should say isolated technical work, some more, some more rep, repetitions, right? So, for example, if we feel like our strikers are struggling for confidence or haven't had a lot of chances, we want to make sure they feel comfortable in front of goal, then maybe we'll spend a small portion of time um, either at the first section of, of, of training or at the last section of training working on it more specific. Attitude. Okay, so that we want to ignore that component but during season it's not the most important. So it will mainly be phase of play 11 v 11 work. Uh, in those two sessions. Okay. Does Could, that make sense? No, that's good. They they understand the phase of plays and, and the small side of games and so forth. So it's, sure. it's they get the lessons of, of pre-coaching, let's say, so that they understand the terminologies of what's expected at the next level. But Martin, I want to thank you very much because we've reached uh, over an hour for it. And I want to thank you again for taking the time out to speak into the players. It's a, it's a very important part of what we're trying to do here at Pickering is to create a pathway for them to have an understanding of using soccer to um, uh, use as a vehicle to get to university. And I think it's great that you are on first and being able to explain to the kids a variety of ways to look at it and they, they'll be able to compare against other schools. And I'm sure that your presentations got some people thinking maybe Western might be a place for me to go to school. So I appreciate that very much. Yeah, no, Dave, I th thank you. And I can say this, uh, you know, one of the things with COVID is we've been on a lot of these calls, you know, and different groups have reached out. And you know, of, of the groups that I've spoken to, I'd say the interaction from this group, the, the ideas, the, the way they've communicated has been absolutely top, top drawer. So credit to you guys at, at Pickering for what you've been doing, because certainly reflects well on your organization. And, 
you know, I've enjoyed the talk, talk quite a bit. So thank you very much. No problem. I appreciate it very much. So uh, if, if we can, can we arrange in the future where we could bring a group of girls and a group of boys that want to showcase their abilities to play you guys in the spring? Don't know when that will be because of the pandemic, but if we can make arrangements for that in the future, I'd really appreciate it. No, absolutely. It'd be great to have you guys on campus. Okay. And uh, it's a good little distance away for, you know, whether it's playing against Western or we could set up games, we'd love to see you down here. Okay. Um, what I'm going to ask is...